play we're going over is PA boot over. What we're going to do is we're going to streak the tight end. We are going to slant the outside bunch receiver. We're going to motion him out, snap as soon as he moves. And you're going to see here that we have essentially a nice little cross concept. This cross concept does a really good job of attacking man and zone coverage. Your first read is really going to, you're going to peak that tight end streak. And then you're really going to be looking for this little underneath crossing route against man coverage. The motion slant, as long as you can get the snap off properly, the motion slant is going to do a really good job of beating man coverage off rip. So if you do anticipate that they are running man coverage, look over here to the left side. You're going to see right when he cuts to the inside, he absolutely will cook the man coverage to the inside pretty much every single time. So you want to be looking to that slant route um, if they are, if you do believe that they are running man coverage. Now, let's say for whatever reason, the receiver, you can't snap the ball. All you want to do is just put him on a basic little five yard in route. So if you can't snap the ball, put him on this little five yard in route and you're going to see that the concept is still going to be there for you. And you also have your nice little crossing route against man and zone coverage. Now, in terms of zone coverage, this play is really effective as well. And the main reason why is because it is a high low uh, all the way across the field. It's why the cross concept is so good. As you see right here, if it ever does that, you just put him on an in route and snap the ball. As you can see here, they cover the flat route. So we're going to be able to throw the crosser over the top of the defender. This is gonna be really effective for cover three and cover four coverages because what they're gonna to have to do with this is they're gonna to have to play hard flats to stop this little crossing route uh, to the circle receiver. And they're gonna to have to use the crossing, the deeper crossing route, even in a cover four coverage, you can still throw this as you can see over here to the sideline. So I wanna show you what it would look like. Let's say that they, um, you know, let's say that they are, are covering this pretty well and they use the cross here, what you might wanna look for. So. Essentially here, they're going to be covering the crossing route. Now, they are dropping eight guys in coverage, so please keep that in mind. Not everybody's going to do that, but when they do that, what typically is going to happen is this little slant route. As you see, he stops, but I can playmaker him across because they have time in the pocket because they're only blitzing three people. If you think it is zone coverage, in my personal opinion, I think the in route is much better for zone. Um, and then I would actually even drag this crossing route. So it's kind of a little bit of a variation of the setup. And the purpose of this variation is just to give us a little bit better results against zone coverage. I'd let him set his feet up. And then what you'll see here is now it's really easy. If they're not playing hard flats, that drag will be open pretty much all day long. And then you'll also be able to hit this little baby in route as it comes across the middle of the field if they decide, okay, well, we're going to play some hard flats and then we're going to use her the outside or um, we're going to use her that slot crossing route then what you're going to want to look to do here is you're just going to want to check down right in that little pocket to that little underneath drag route the next setup of PA boot over is really effective, especially if you have tight end apprentice. So if you're an ultimate team, I would really recommend a tight end apprentice here at the tight end position. And then I would recommend a slot apprentice. And really, it's kind of up to you where to put him. I actually like to put uh, the slot apprentice to the left, to the outside of the bunch formation. And then if you wanted to, you could put a backfield apprentice as well. Those are three really good abilities. In Mutt, you have the full capability to be able to do that. In Regs, you have uh, the ability to do that via the Chiefs. If you're in CFM, you probably could do that via just the abilities you equip your players. So um, if you want to use route chemistries, it does make this offense significantly better, especially in this year and last year. Bunch tight end, I think, kind of needs at least a tight end apprentice and a slot apprentice. That's my opinion. Um, but you can run this without that, but I wouldn't say it's a standalone scheme without that. But with, with the route chemistries, it is definitely a, a standalone uh, offense. So what we're going to do for our next setup is we're going to put the tight end on the tight end apprentice post. And we're going to zig our uh, slot receiver. This is really good for man coverage. This is my go-to play. If they are wanting to run man coverage on me, this is the my favorite play in the game, uh, or at least from this formation, to be able to attack man coverage. Now, this little crossing route, unfortunately, for whatever reason this year specifically, it's a lot worse than it's ever been, this little uh, crossing route underneath. So what you can do, if you think it's man-to-man, -man, um, I, like I still like to slant. And the reason I still like to slant him is, again, Against man to man, he will just cook man coverage across the middle of the field. Now, let's say that you're watching this, and you're like, I'm not, I'm not really, you know, I don't, I don't trust slant routes, right? Because they stop sometimes. They typically are going to stop in zone, or if they get bumped. So, like what you'll see here it is, if he doesn't get bumped off the line of scrimmage, like he can get jammed. But if he doesn't get bumped, he'll still run his route pretty much 
uh, true to the route. So what you can do with this is because in our PA boot over setup, we were using a drag route or this little shallow crossing route. The beauty of this is let's say they go to, um, you know, zone coverage with a hard flat. I want you to watch the slant route, get over here to the right side. It's actually going to get over the top of this hard flat and low key 33 actually played that out of his mind. Let me show that one more time. Let's see if we can get uh, the proper behavior from the zone defender. So if they're using the hard flat to defend the drag, typically what's going to happen is this slant route will be open. Let me see if I can throw this. I don't know if I can. I guess I can't. Um, but typically you would be able to throw that. I don't know why we can't throw that in practice mode. Uh, but anyways, the biggest thing here is if you want to drag this guy, that's all I want to say. If you want to drag him, if you want to slant him, if you want to do whatever, you can really do whatever. You just need him to come underneath and across. It's a, it's a shallow cross concept. It's a slant post concept. It's the best man beating concept every single year. And you want to take advantage of this. Now, the beauty of this play also is let's say that they are dropping some zones to try to help defend things like this little underneath drag. Uh, maybe they drop a hard flat over here to defend this route. And then maybe they drop a, a purple or, or a hard flat over here to defend the, the underneath route. And then they're going to use it at the tight end. If they don't have safety help over the top and they leave this post one-on-one -on -one. a lot of times this post can get uh can be a one play touchdown and you just want to basically pass lead him to space and a lot of times he's going to be open for you especially as you you know if you have better players obviously the better route running you have the better the route is going to work against man coverage specifically so just keep that in mind but here you see again i mean he just cooks him and if you just get the right rack animation as you can see we're able to get a one play touchdown against really a great little defense out of uh, cover one style coverages so really like this play for uh, attacking man coverage the the underneath little zig route they have to respect that this year zig routes are really good this year with a little jurdle up field you can get you know 15 to 20 yards so i really like the the little whip route as well attached to this some people like to put a flat the reason i don't like to do that is because it doesn't really help you beat man coverage but the zig route is so consistent this year at beating man they're gonna have to respect this play and uh, it's really 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 good against man coverage now one way that you could actually make this play a little bit better against zone coverage is by running this with your bunch to the short side of the field by running this with your bunch to the short side of the field you'll be able to throw this tight end post route against practically every zone in the game so what you're going to see here is we're going to go to a baseline press cover four drop with hard flats which is pretty good defense for what we're trying to do here but what you'll see is when this tight end kind of clears that yellow zone he's going to get open in this little pocket one of the most underrated things a lot of people don't realize in man 24 is when you have a deep skinny post like we do in this play for whatever reason especially with these outside quarters, even if they have deep out zone knockouts and all those abilities, the the post route really pulls the outside quarters to the middle of the field, especially if that post route is outside of the numbers. So it's going to be in the grid of that outside quarter defender. You'll see here he pulls that outside quarter to the middle of the field and then allows us that little window there to be able to hit the tight end. Super, super important uh, little route combination. And then the cool part about this as well is let's say that they are, you know, trying to trying to defend this. If you take a look at the screen, you're going to see that the cover four, typically you're going to get a user right here because if this was dollar, they would want to be using this guy so that they could stop the run or that they could send the, the cover to blitz over the middle, right? This is kind of a, a, a standard way people would use her. So let's say that they try to go to defend this tight end post. One of the real beauty of the spacing that we create, especially I think by using the slant route or that little uh, PA boot over crossing route that comes stock to the play, what you're going to see is if they go to the post, you can throw this before he gets to the flat zone and it's a really nice little read. So it makes it a very difficult play to defend and they're going to have to start dropping little hook zones in the middle of the field, which really I don't think anyone ever wants to do that. Um, and so, I mean, I just I think this combo is is very good. And if you think about it, it it's attacking a essentially a high low to the left side. So one of the things that your opponent might try to do to defend this is they might try to go to a cover two style coverage. What you're going to see is first and foremost, throw your zig. OK, the zig route is a very safe route in this game. If they are not playing hard flats, you want to take advantage of that and you want to throw your little little zig route over the middle of the field. However, I did want to go over. Uh, kind of what happens on this play if they are able to kind of rely on this cloud flat notice the cloud flat goes down to the zig and you're able to throw the titan post over the top of the cloud flat defender 
Now, another thing is that we'll show you here with the same exact route combination. Let's say that I'm back over here to the uh, right side of the screen. And let's say that you're playing somebody that is running, you know, your kind of standard like double Mabel coverage, trying to stop sideline routes. This, um, this is pretty interesting. So uh, what you'll see here is come out in the same exact setup but now what we're going to do is we're going to set up a double mabel coverage trying to defend the sidelines really really well so maybe we do something like like uh like this and then we have little hook curls underneath right pretty standard okay so when you have your bunch to the wide side of the field um this post route can sometimes beat uh those coverages so what you'll see here See if we can get this to get open. See, here's the deep half. Deep half actually recovered pretty well there. So I'll show you what you can do. Just a little bit of a, a tip. And it looks very similar to another setup we have in this formation. So remember when we talked about P boot over, the first setup out of out of P boot over was essentially to motion, uh, to motion the the uh, the outside receiver outside. Well, this will look exactly the same. So what we're going to do is we're just going to zig the same as same route combo, but now we're just going to motion this guy out. Now, by motioning this guy out, we get a couple of things accomplished. The first thing we get accomplished is it's still going to pull any kind of deep quarter or deep third on that side of the field so that the post will get open. But the second thing is if they're in a double Mabel coverage where they're playing like just basic cover two, now you've got a touchdown over the top, as you can see right there. Super, super good little route that a lot of people kind of underestimate the power of in cover two because if I just simply motion this guy out, this basically becomes trips tight in. And then now I'm able to take advantage of the fact that I can give my post a little bit more space against man coverage. And again, he'll still always be able to clear out the cover four. And I'll show that real quick because a lot of people like to run the deep out zone knockout meta with their outside corners to try to basically, you know, take away sidelines with outside quarter zones. But I want you to watch here again. I'm using a deep skinny post route. And what you'll see is because it's such a deep skinny post, that quarter goes to the middle of the field. I can easily come back to the ball and they really don't have a chance to KO me with this uh, specific route combination. Now, another thing that I want to show you out of this play is a little bit of a coverage bomb. Uh, this is more so for cover three. So what we're going to do now, uh, we're just going to tweak the setup slightly. So we're going to still slant the inside bunch receiver. We're still going to uh, tight end apprentice post, the outside guy, or the tight end. We're still going to motion this guy out, but now we're going to streak this guy up the middle of the field. And what this is going to do is it's going to pull the middle third defender. And a lot of times what you can do is you can throw that post underneath that middle third um, once he kind of crosses his face. Now, for this specific setup, if it is a cover three, and it's in, in my opinion, it's, it's really only if it's a cover three. If it is a cover three coverage, you can kind of leave this this uh, stock, as you see. You're going to have to, as you see right there, it's kind of a... It's kind of a difficult throwing window, to be honest. What I would much rather you do is motion this guy. I just think it's space is better, and it's better for other coverages that aren't cover three because it gives this slant route time to get across the field to pull the outside third. So what you'll see here, he pulls the outside third a lot better this time, and now this is just a lot more open. And as you can see, we're able to you know get a one-play score against cover three. Now, this one-play score is also, as I, as I already showed you, is, is really there for you against cover two. So if they run a cover two, um, you know, defense, it doesn't have to be a double Mabel coverage, but oftentimes if someone's running cover two in men 24, it's probably going to be a double Mabel coverage. So anyways, what you'll see is this, this same exact concept is going to apply. Now, let's say you don't have tight end apprentice. You don't have to have a tight end apprentice post. You can put him on a smart routed in route and it will basically cause the same exact effect. You see the deep half kind of ducks down to go guard the slant route. Nice camera angle, EA Sports, and we're able to hit this over the top against cover two. So this is a universal coverage bomb out of bunch tight end. Most formations in Madden this year don't actually have a universal setup like this to be able to bomb all kinds of different coverages, which is another advantage, I think, to the bunch tight end that a lot of people are kind of sleeping on. Now, uh, this this right here is cover four. The cover four one, um, it, it does work, but I would say, as you see right here, see how he kind of just doesn't get across the face of the quarter. That is um, that is the, the kind of big thing with the cover four. So if they quarter there, oftentimes they're going to be able to defend this. Now, the thing, though, the thing about that, though, is if let's say we run it from this 
kind of compress compression of bunch tight end against that same exact look, we have a better chance. You'll see here, he'll kind of come across. You just want to throw this down into the right and you're in a, essentially a gift wrap ag catch type of situation. It's not the best bomb for cover four. I wish it was a little better than it is. If you are, like, if you know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, your opponent is definitely running cover four, you can try to smart route the post. It'll give it a little bit more room to get open. And uh, we'll see if we can get this to, to beat cover four here for you. So as you see right there, like, it, it kind of beats it, but it's, I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't say it's, like, dominating cover four, okay? Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, but I really like this combo, and I like that we can motion this guy out and then we can create, kind of create the same look that we did from our crossing route that goes uh, heavy to the right side. And now we have a nice post route coming back across the defense um, to the left hand side. Now, the next setup of PA over that I want to go over with you guys is a man to man beater primarily. Um, it's a simple slant post combo, but it's really effective. And uh, we'll show you how it works. So, basically, what we're going to do here is we are going to slant our outside bunch receiver. We're going to streak our tight end, and we're going to zig our uh, inside bunch receiver. So you see this is what the player looks like. We're just going to motion this guy across. We're going to snap once he passes the tight end, and we're going to peek the tight end. If he's open, we're going to take it. If not, you see here we have this nice little slant post concept over the middle to be able to attack uh, really just mainly man coverage. Um, it, it, it can beat zone coverage, but it's not really designed to beat zone coverage, okay? Um, this is just designed essentially this type of a slant route this year is a lot better than like a motion out slant in terms of its ability to actually kind of run his route properly as you can see he didn't stop there so motion over slants i think are a little better than motion out slants in terms of their consistency not saying it's going to be 100 percent consistent if it's zone this is why i like to say if it is man-to-man -man coverage then i would be more comfortable running a motion slant than if it is zone coverage because in zone coverage they just kind of randomly bump each other and it causes a lot of issues but we can get this kind of clean release here and look how much this cooks man coverage i mean that that is why that route is so valuable to us so now if you think about it what are they going to do to kind of counter that well, what they can do to counter that, honestly, is they're going to user it. So if they user this route, then what we're going to be able to do is we're either going to be able to hit our little zig route underneath, or we're going to hit our crossing route over the top for a nice little completion against that coverage. So this little setup of pivot over is fairly simple, fairly straightforward, but does a really, really good job of attacking man coverage. The next setup of P-Boot over that we're going to be showing you is designed really when your opponent starts to run a lot of Mabel coverage because what we understand about Mabel coverage in terms of how they're going to have to play that against bunch tight end is they're going to have to defend the deep middle of the field. If they don't, we're going to have a touchdown, right? We showed that with our uh, P-Boot over setup. So if they are showing us kind of a look that's like, okay, this is probably double Mabel coverage, then what we want to do is we want to take a look at this combo because oftentimes they're going to have to have somebody in the deep middle of the field. So because they have to have somebody in the deep middle area of the field it's going to limit how many underneath defenders they're able to have so what i like to do is we're going to put our outside bunch receiver on a curl we are going to in route our running back and we're going to streak our tight end so as you can see this is a five out combo and what you're going to have essentially is this high low to the right side of the field where their user early is going to have to use her that little crossing route that in route is going to pull the flats out of the middle of the field and you're going to be able to throw that little curl route in a soft spot against the zone now this is also a very good combo for man coverage and really any kind of defense that you might face but i want to show what would happen let's say if they decided okay we're going to user that curl route i want to show you how you can actually throw this post um, or this crosser against that coverage so what you can see is they go to that side we could throw this right in that little pocket before he gets to the flat zone and be, due to set feet lead and the ability to just catch balls in traffic this year it's going to really open up your offense this is also a really good combo for man-to-man -man. so if they want to run some man-to-man -man concepts this is a pretty good little route combo so what we're going to do same exact setup. 
And you're going to see here this little running back in route. A lot of people don't uh, realize how good this little running back in route is against man-to-man -man this year, especially when you have like a bunch formation like this. They're going to have to kind of run through the mud, and it really makes this a great little combo against man coverage. You still have everything you had before, and then now you also have a little backside curl. Curl routes are one of the more underrated routes this year, especially with set feet lead. And with this, if you want to drag that inside bunch receiver, go for it because it will just make it a little easier uh, for beating man to man. As you can see, he's going to beat man coverage pretty consistently. And then um, you also are able to hit your little curl route. So your curl route right here, just basically just pass lead it down. You want to possession catch it. I don't even necessarily, you don't even necessarily have to like free form it necessarily. What you can just do here, let me show you, when he turns around, just pass lead down, you're able to catch the ball, and uh, super easy, okay? So I really like this little combo here. It's something I don't call it a ton, um, but it is something that is really effective. Let me show you this against like a cover four coverage style. So cover four is going to have a little bit more success in terms of stopping the curl route. But what you'll see a lot of times is you see how that hook curl kind of drifts to the middle of the field, and then I'm able to throw this little curl route underneath. So that's another little factor there that you want to just kind of keep in the back of your mind. These little basic little curl routes here are super, super advantageous out of uh, this just because it limits their capabilities to be able to run two mana or um, double Mabel. And curl routes this year are actually really, really good against man to man coverage. For this setup of spacing, we're going to be showing you this against a double Mabel coverage, kind of our go-to play against any kind of like double Mabel type of zone concept. Really effective little route combo we're about to show you here. What we're going to do is we're going to put our tight end on a tight end print his post. We're going to slant our uh, slot receiver, and then we're just going to snap the ball. So if it's man-to-man -man coverage, got a couple different routes that you can hit here. Uh, the first one is this slant route. As you can see, it's going to get across the field and get open against man coverage. So now they're in a situation where they have to kind of go user that slant route if they want to play man on us. And then what that's going to do is it's going to then open up this tight end apprentice post, as you can see right here. We just want to throw that with an outside pass lead to the left, and we're going to be able to attack man coverage that way as well. So a couple key routes for beating man coverage. If you want to put the tight end on a crosser, um, crossers are kind of underrated this year. As you see, I actually think they get more separation than tight end apprentice posts do. So you can use a little underneath crosser if you want to. Um, but anyways, this is the setup. Now, the next thing uh, we want to always look for out of the backfield is just this quick throw to the back. A lot of times they really don't defend that out of bunch tight end. So it's a it's kind of just a, a peak. You just want to peek out there. If they cover that, okay. If they don't, they don't. But if you look at this alignment, if we're playing man coverage, they're probably going to use her, this guy right here, right? So what they're going to do is this guy's going to be in the middle of the field. Now they have to make a decision. Is this safety the guy that's manned up on the running back, or is it this um, – this linebacker a lot of times it's actually going to be this linebacker so if they're in a situation like that then you just want to peek out here a lot of times you can throw this to the running back quick and they won't be able to defend it because they're having to use her other things in the middle of the field so just something uh, to kind of peek at a little bit if you want to hit that now the main purpose behind running this play is if again we're getting a lot of double Mabel coverage because in double Mabel coverage they're going to have to put these yellow zones in deep thirds uh, if they're playing you know bunch tight end because they got to worry about the post route so then what we have here is a little triangle read over the middle where we can just simply check down to this little baby hitch route really nice route against the zone defense now I will say one of the things that they're going to be able to do to defend this is basically they just need a vertical hook so if they have a vertical hook on the field and they're running double mabel coverage then what you're going to be able to do here is your slant route is going to get open right in that little pocket because we have the running back on this little table route stock uh, built into the play then what you're going to be able to do let me show this to you a little bit more give you a little bit better of an example of this here but they're backing these guys off because they want to play double mabel coverage this guy's in the middle of the field he has to go guard the tight end post because the tight end post will get open in the middle and i'll show that in a minute but what you'll see is when they vacate, you see there's this big void right in here to throw this little slant route underneath. So let's say that they were to sit on the slant route underneath and they weren't going to guard the tight end post. Then what you're going to be able to do here is if I take the slant route, it's going to look kind of practically like a hook curl in the middle of the field underneath. But what you'll see here is this vertical hook will sit 
on the hitch. So you just want to throw your tight end post kind of right in that window and that vert hook will never play it because he's got to stay underneath on the hitch. Now, there are situations uh, with certain pl people, just the way they want to play defense in Madden. I've seen a lot of people, uh, not a lot of people, but some people do this. They'll put their hook curls on about 15 uh, to try to basically counter what I just showed you to do with the tight end post. So if you're playing someone that's doing that, again, this is a read. You have to actually look at the defense and you know think a little bit about what they're doing post-snap. But if the yellow drops back to the tight end, as you see here, then guess what we can throw? The little hitch underneath, okay? So if the hitch is open, throw the hitch. If the post is open, throw the post. I know it's super simple, but it's very effective, and um, this is a really, really key play. Now, another really underrated play, in my opinion, in the bunch tight end offense, and you can really do this out of almost anything. Uh, you could do it out of spacing. You could do it out of – we're going to show it out of this play mesh. You kind of need a slot apprentice for this um, to make it as good as you possibly can make it. But it's really this right here. It's a great man-beating play. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to slot apprentice post the – slot or the outside bunch receiver and we're going to wheel the running back so this is what the play art looks like now the purpose of this play primarily is to beat main coverage this little combo right here where you're dragging the tight end and then you have the running back on a wheel route is a really effective way to be able to attack man-to-man uh, -man coverage so what you're going to see here is really one of these routes is going to pretty much always be open. Now that flat route actually ran really bad <laughs> um, but You'll see right here, a lot of times he gets out there a little bit better, but you would throw this right in that little window right there. So you have the ability to hit that route. And then the other thing that you have with this is by using a by using these drag routes this year, the running back wheel can kill man coverage, okay? So it's just a way that we ha they have to now – uh, respect the fact that you can throw this wheel route. If they don't respect this, then you know they're going to be in cover one style coverage. So you see here, see how he kind of gets over the shoulder of that defender. A lot of times you're going to be able to throw this against man, uh, and it kind of depends a little bit on the man coverage specifically that you're playing. Because here we're getting a little bit of a switch. Not all man coverages are going to do that, but as you can see, he gets over the top of the defender. You just want to basically freeform that up and over the top of the defender, and you're going to have some nice, uh, some nice separation. So because of those couple of things right they're going to now have to have a deep half defender over there right they're going to probably have to have something to the left side because of some other combos we've shown and this is where you know now the user might jump to one of these little underneath drag routes and you can throw this in the middle of the field so this just spaces the field really well in my opinion and um let's let's also show this real quick so this little underneath drag to the slot receiver please don't sleep on these little underneath drags this year they're so good against man coverage they're too effective against man coverage to not throw them if they even have a centimeter of separation you can just simply pass lead this to the outside uh, horizontal pass lead essentially like my joystick was at 3 p.m that's how i threw that and you're going to get these rat catch animations that are just going to absolutely get you some nice separation against man as you see Again, again, and again, if they want to play man coverage on us, this kind of route combination is really effective. Another thing you can do with this, if you wanted to, is you can motion this guy out. This would just give a little bit more time for your routes to be able to develop in the middle of the field. So just keep that in mind. You can throw this before it gets to yellow zones and things like that. I don't think that's a bad thing to do uh, with this specific setup. And the main reason why is just, again, it just gives us more time uh, to get, get the routes open. So it just gives us a little bit better spacing. You can throw it before he gets to that yellow zone. Really nice route. They're going to, as a user defender, they're going to bite down on the drags a little bit more because you don't have to wait. The, the important thing to show here, you don't have to wait until he gets to the middle. So if you look out here to the left side, as soon as he cuts to the middle, right there, I can throw it, which gets, there, which gets him the ball before he gets to the user defender. Now you might say, okay, well, that's a really good setup, but how good is it against man-to-man -man or a zone? I will say it's not as good against zone, but it is good in general. And the reason why is because we're attacking both flats, both underneath yellow zones, and the intermediate middle of the field. So what you'll see here is the flat is going to get pulled out by that flat route, and then the tight end can be thrown underneath it. So really nice little setup. Now another thing you could do, let's say that you don't have, um, let's say that you don't have. Uh, slot apprentice 
and you want to do this out of P boot over, you have this crosser. Okay. What I would, what you could also do with this is you could put this guy on a flat and motion him out. The only reason you might want to do it like this is just because the flat route will get over there a little bit better. You see the tight end has a lot more room to work underneath now than he did previously. Um, you know, so something to kind of keep in mind if you wanted to do something like that. Uh, I did want to show one other thing about this play, and that is that the running back wheel route will clear out deep zones. So if you wait on this pose, let's say you have a lot of time, you can actually throw this down right in that little pocket against any deep, uh, any cover four or cover three coverage. So if they are running kind of, you know, some of these types of defenses, then again, if you just wait on this, wait on this, wait on this and throw it about right in here, you see you're able to complete this pass against, uh, against that coverage. All right. Now the second setup of mesh, fairly simple. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're just trying to essentially flood to the left side. This one's a really simple setup. All we're going to do is we're going to fade the slot receiver and we're going to Texas route our running back. It's a five out setup, but it's really effective. And what you're going to see here is this corner route. If it's not pressed, a lot of times it's going to beat me in coverage. Actually kind of crazy congestion over there. Let's uh, show that again. So again, um, the other thing you have too is this little flat. You can try to throw that as well. But if you get man, this is not the best setup for man just because as you see, they kind of bump really bad. If you get man, you want to streak that slot. You don't want to fade him. If you streak him, just by simply streaking him, it makes it better against man coverage. So just keep that in mind. The other thing you have here is let's say they are playing you in man coverage. If you look here, this is cover one robber. A lot of times they don't have deep help over the top, so you could hit that. The other thing is this little running back Texas route. This is the main reason we put the running back Texas route on the field because if they uh, if they go down to go guard the tight end route, then the running back Texas route is going to be wide open. So you'll see right here when he cuts the middle, just beats man coverage, inside pass lead, and um, as you can see, we're able to really cook man that way. Now, let's say that they, you know, let's say that they roll down with their user and they try to defend that. Then you really want to look for this tight end route, just right in this little pocket. Just take your easy yardage. This is again not a play that's completely designed to beat man, uh, but it can beat man. And let's talk about how this play against zone and why it's good. It's really good against zone coverage and primarily because they can't. The cool part about bunch tight end is you have corner routes from all three of these players. Um, I think that's super, super good. So what you're going to see here, here's mesh. You see, get the clear out, and you basically just get this corner route in behind it. Really nice. So you're able to uh, able to attack the defense that way. Another thing that's really interesting about mesh, and I'll show this, um, I'll show that with this setup here. This is if you wanted to move your slot apprentice around a little bit, or if you had Hara Master. You could put this guy on a corner. If you look at this corner route to the mesh route, a lot of people don't really understand how good of a corner route this is. It's kind of like a short corner in the in terms of how it's going to run. So what you'll see here is if I if I run it like this, you can actually throw this against that cover four coverage and essentially run the double corner concept. A lot of people don't know this about about uh, bunch tight end because most people don't really run bunch tight end this year. But what you'll see is this mesh corner specifically. And what I would do is this combo right here. But what you will see is let's say they're running cover four or cover three base pressed. The. Uh, slot will clear out the deep third and then this comes underneath it and it's really wide open for you okay so I really like that setup and I still have my uh, zone drops set up for double Mabel coverage now for when you're running double corner especially in Madden 24 it wasn't as much the case in Madden 23 but when you're running double corner I think you really want to be to the wide side of the field. Now, this is a um, you want your corners to run to the wide side of the field just to give them more space to manipulate the zone defenders. This is a double Mabel coverage with a 30 yard cloud. We backed them off, obviously, and I want you to take a look at this. So, what you're going to see here is that deeper corner route is actually going to get over the top of a 30 yard cloud route. Uh, 30 yard cloud flat defender. So this is a, a very underrated play um, in terms of the bunch in terms of the bunch tight end. Most people don't realize how good of a play this is. Now, let's say you let's say you don't have a ability to run a Texas route. You could do this. I mean, you could run that. You could reel him. You could streak him out of the backfield. Uh, a very underrated route combo is to streak this running back out of the backfield because you'll see right here, he'll actually be able to manipulate that linebacker one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and we'll show that again against man coverage specifically. So 
you know, if we wanted to run a combo like this, watch the running back. Uh, you'll see here he'll kind of get if I free form up and outside. A lot of times he gets over the top of the linebacker. So something to just look at. Uh, at least you know, you know, just something simple with that. But yeah, I really like this play. I think that a lot of people don't realize how good this play is. And if they're, like I said, if they're base press cover four with deep out KOs, it's not going to matter because the way this mesh corner runs, it runs slower than uh, like a slot apprentice corner. So what you, if you watch this, you'll see it really times well and it actually spaces fairly decently. It was a bad free form. Um, it actually spaces fairly decently. Now we have some other routes we're going to show you in a minute with this double corner concept, but I did want to show that you can, if you're willing to move your slot apprentice around a little bit, you can create it out of this right here. And, you know, this really will get open a lot of times. So really, really nice route out of the play mesh. Our next setup is out of X-Spot. This is uh, the primary purpose of this play is to force them to have to mable the left-hand side and to just allow us to flood zones easily. Now, for this setup, I like to put my bunch to the short side of the field, and it's very similar to mesh. All we're going to do is we're going to streak our outside bunch receiver. We're going to drag our tight end, and we're going to Texas route our running back. So hopefully you're kind of seeing like a little bit of a uh, – like a thread or a common theme here is when we run a flood zones and the cool part about bunch tight end is you can do it from all three of your receivers. So anyways, uh, what you're going to see here is this route to triangle normally beats man a little better than he did right there. Um, really your man beating combos are to the right. So just keep that in mind as well. But normally this corner route is a little better. Let's see if we can get him to run it better this time. Kind of ran it a little better. If you ever get in trouble, just click on, try to make a catch, you know, but, um, again, this is really more of a zone beating combo. So if they're base press cover four, this is really good for that because this, um, if you look at the positioning of these three players, if this was gun bunch offset, they would be a little closer to the line of scrimmage, uh, or not the line of scrimmage, but to the, to the tackle because it's bunched tight in, they're a little bit more spaced out better. And so what you're going to see is this is going to clear out cover four a lot better than it does out of like, um, than it does out of, out of bunch. Okay. So I really like that about this formation and we'll show this to you again. And that was cover four. We'll show this to you against cover three. Now, uh, I put all my zone drops back on default too. So you can see like curl flat, um, the curl flat zone won't defend this. They're going to have to put a 30 yard cloud on the field and one of the things that's really unique about this we can actually just show this for real quick is let's say they're putting let's say they're uh playing you and they're going to run a defense like this for example again a lot of times what will happen is they have to have a middle third defender so one of the things they might do is they might take this guy put him in an outside third and they might put this guy in a middle third like this okay now uh their user might cut the drag uh off rip so if the user cuts the drag here, a worthy read to discuss is this Texas right in that pocket. That right there is a nice high level read that will allow you to really manipulate double Mabel coverage, even when um, double Mabel coverage kind of to a degree has you dead to rights in your in your concept. So uh, really like that as well. If they run a true double Mabel coverage and they have really good user in the middle field, they probably do have you taken taken care of, but. Other than that, um, as you can see there, finally beat man coverage well. This is just a simple flood concept to the left-hand side. And I want to show you some other plays here that you can use, uh, some combos you can use with your tight end apprentice, as well as uh, triple out. So triple out is a really, really important play in the, in the offense because it allows you to beat uh, 30-yard cloud flats. So you want to have access to that play. And we'll show you us out of triple out. And let me um, let me go back to the short side of the field for this. So there's a couple different setups that I like out of triple out. The first one is is the double Mabel killer. Okay, and double Mabel normally you have a little more time in the pocket. So what you're gonna do? You're gonna do the same combo on the backside on the right. If you don't have the ability to do that combo, I would do this combo right here. Okay. That's perfectly fine. If you're going to do this, I would probably in route the tight end. Better spacing. But really, all we're going to do here to the left is we're going to flat 
the outside bunch receiver and we're going to streak the slot. So what this is going to do, and you can smart route circle if you want to, but what you'll see is this is a super deep corner route and it will crucify the 30 yard clouds. As you see right there, I mean, it just absolutely cooks it. And this corner route is one of those routes where you don't really use it a lot in your base offense, but as they start to adjust to different things that you're doing offensively, this becomes one of the best routes in your playbook because what you'll see here, and if you wanted to just run it like this as a quick snap play, you certainly could. Um, I mean, he just absolutely manipulates the crap out of the cover two coverage. So you're able to really attack cover two well with this, uh, with this setup. So that's the main purpose of this play. Now I did want to say, or I, I did want to show this. So let's say, they are calling uh, cover four. This corner route um, kind of can get open, but it's kind of bagged at the same time. Like if they have deep out zone KOs, it's probably going to get bagged over there on the left. So if they're pressing, I don't normally like to run this. But if they are off coverage and they're running cover four, it's a little bit more forgiving. You'll see here. Um, it's just a little bit more forgiving. Again, it's probably a KO, but... Uh, just understand that you have access to that. Now, if you have slot apprentice, what I would do is you could create a combo that looks like like this. That I actually really like this route combo, and the reason why is just because of the fact that now the corner route's coming from the inside. So again, you can kind of move your slot apprentice around a little bit, and it creates a really nice route combo. This this combo right here that we're going to show you with the slot apprentice on. Uh, with the slot apprentice here, and you could even do this setup right here. This right here is really effective for any kind of base press cover four or cover three. Uh, and we'll show that to you again here. When they're pressed up, the spacing on this one is it's hard to beat that. It's really good spacing. Okay. So that is how we use triple out to be able to attack double Mabel to the short side of the field if that is a, a tendency that our opponent has defensively. But now what I want to do is I want to show you how we can actually attack a couple different coverages, uh, a couple different coverages with triple out. So the first one that I want to show is back to that cover two for just a second. If you're playing someone that's really, really advanced, um, they might not fall for this as much as, but I actually think most people like, like if you're playing six, one, if you're playing six, one and they're running the double Mabel stuff or, you know, if you're playing someone that doesn't understand the power of outside thirds on the corner, you can still run this to the wide side and absolutely, again, absolutely cook double Mabel coverage. OK, so just understand that you have access to that. Now, uh, the other thing you can do here is you can put your slot apprentice corner out there. And the importance of this is this play is going to give you that double corner concept. And it's going to give you a seam streak to your slot receiver. Okay. So what you're going to see here, here's cover four. And what you'll see is this space is really, really well. So cover four or cover three, you're going to be able to manipulate with this double corner concept. And then you're still streaking this slot receiver. So because you're still streaking your slot receiver, you're going to have, um, you're going to have something for cover two. So again, here, you just want to wait on this. Now, um, now if that happens right there, you have, you literally have a touchdown and I'll show it in replay and then we'll show it in game. So if I don't think I smart routed this route and that's why he ran a little deeper, look at this right here. This is a touchdown hundred percent. Okay. So what you want to do is let's say they are playing that. Let me see if I can throw this for you guys. So if you leave this guy on this, like super deep, like 30 yard corner route, He's not going to cut. And so because he doesn't cut, now this becomes, and I forgot to put the slot apprentice corner, so my fault. But because he doesn't cut to the sideline fast enough, a lot of times what can happen is this can be a one-play score against cover four. So you see right here. And eh, kind of kind of got bagged, actually. Maybe that's a cover three thing. I don't know why cover three would be different than cover four out there. It seemed like it's kind of interesting. So let's see here. Here's cover three. Maybe it was a cover three thing. Maybe I accidentally was in cover three. Let's see. Nope. Yeah, if you wait on this long enough, I mean, this is open. So I would just, I would, but if you smart route the route, it's a little better in my experience. 
because it's gonna get it's gonna cut a little quicker. So you see here again, just wait on that. And he'll do that little hitch and then he'll go. So you just want to wait until that outside quarter defender kind of fully commits to running to go guard that deeper corner route. And it's a little bit of you should kind of want to wait to throw this to the last possible second, honestly. What a great pass rush from I don't even know who that is because it's not even the Niners starting pass rush, but he just absolutely caged me. I'll show this to you one more time, and then we'll talk about some other things you can do with this play. Oh, let's wait on this. Eh. Yeah, it's kind of weird how it does that sometimes. It has to do with the smart routing of the route. If you smart route the route, it's going to be open a little faster than if you don't because he's going to cut a little faster. So you see here. This time I smart routed the route, and now that guy doesn't drop down, and we're able to throw that. So if you ever want to try to, like, really take a – like, take a shot, if you will, um, to the wide side, and what you could do is you can kind of mess with this route um, a little bit. So you could do something like this. This is actually not a terrible route combination. And this outside quarter can – be susceptible to falling down there and then you know you have something like that underneath it my experience is it's not consistent enough this year to justify it um and it has to be a base press quarter so just i mean you know something like this i mean it's oh i was accidentally a man but anyway I would just look at it. Um, if it's if it's there, it's there. If it's not, it's not, right? But again, you know, if they're running base press cover four, I just haven't found anything that's like 100% consistent. But this, it's a little bit more so like, like a zig, I'm thinking, or like a, I mean, you could do this. I wonder if you, I wonder if you could do like a, just a basic five yard out. Let's see if we can just hitch him for just a second. Yeah, there it is. Now, when you throw this, there's a, a specific pass lead you're going to have to have. Again, you want to kind of mess with the motion out route. Whatever that route is going to be, you want to kind of tinker with that and test it on your own because I don't really run this setup. I'm just kind of freestyling right now. But what I want you to see here is there is a window to throw this against cover four drop. So you motion this guy out, let's say, on a flat or something. See how that guy kind of does that little hitch? If you freeform and high point up into the outside – you can kind of get that over the top of that outside quarter, okay? So you're gonna have to kind of like lab a little bit and say, okay, what's the route that I want to? What's the route that I want to use? Ideally, we could use this corner route, um, and I think you can use it. It's just a little bit, yeah. If he touches him, though, it's a KO. So you got to understand that as well. The only other thing I wanted to show you about this uh, this play specifically, and then we'll talk about a couple other a couple other things as well as how to score in the red zone, is if they're flat. Oh, um, this is another thing I didn't want to cover. Real quick, before we cover the Mabel coverage, I just want to cover this real quick. If people are running uh, base press cover four, a lot of times they're doing it with their zone coverage on default. If their zone coverage is on default, it's a much better uh, chance that this combo is going to be open because the quarter will play a little more underneath if they do that. So you'll see here. Yeah. See how he kind of froze like that. And then this throw becomes open up and over the top. So if you're playing like a perennial cover four drop guy, this, um, this is one little trick that you have is your ability to, you know, again, if they're base pressing, oftentimes they're putting their zone on default. If they, if they don't have their match on, this guy is a lot more susceptible to the underneath stuff. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's not like a, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things that a lot of people don't know about it is that when you play zone coverage on default, it plays a little more underneath inherently, so you can hit – you have a, a better chance to hit something like that. Now, what I wanted to talk about uh, as well for the last piece of this play is the fact that if they run – a lot of people are you know maybe going to go into a double Mabel coverage. Um, it just depends a little bit on what they're doing with their deep zones. Most of the time they're going to be in deep halves. Uh, the point I just want to make here is you can throw your deeper corner route, but you, what you want to do is you want to pass lead it – more to the sideline than you probably would if you were just throwing it on the short side of the field. So it's not more, it's not like an up pass lead is what I'm trying to get at. It's, it's more of a sideline pass lead. 
um, because this way you'll see here the deep half kind of stays middle. We're going to throw that down into the sideline. As you can see, we're able to beat cover two. So the beauty of double corner and why double corner is so good is that it beats almost every zone that you can throw out there. Okay. Okay. So I uh, wanted to also show another combo that I like for, um, and this is out of P, P, but over. It doesn't have to be out of P, but over, but it can't. It's, it's good out of P, but over. This combo I really like uh, for just the short side. So if your bunch is to the wide side here, what we're going to do is we're going to put the tight end on a tight end apprentice corner. And the main purpose for this is if you're getting kind of a look like uh, this, let's see if I can get the baseline. So let's say you're getting a look like this, and this guy is going to be on a quarter or a third and they're rolling their coverage, right? This is pretty popular. This kind of steals an underneath defender. So this is just to make sure that they can't do that practically. You know, so you've got this right here. So what we're gonna do is, and again, it doesn't have to be out of, it honestly doesn't have to be out of P, but over, and it might even be better that it's not. If you did this out of really anything, it, it, it's fine. Um, but basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the tight end on a tight end apprentice corner. We're going to put the running back on a streak. We're going to drag the inside bunch receiver. We're going to slot apprentice post the outside bunch receiver. And then I like to streak the slot or put him on a flat up to you. But basically the whole purpose of this is to throw that route on the sideline. So that was an outside quarter or an outside third. It doesn't matter which uh, the running back streak will just do a really good job of clearing out the zone over there on the right. So that's the whole purpose of this setup is just to say, okay, you have to Mabel over there. So if you're not, if they're not willing to Mabel and let's say you, let's say you're watching this, you're like, I don't have, I only can, I, I can only do a tight end apprentice Then put this guy on a curl route and it'll work the same way. Okay. So you'll see here wide open against that outside quarter. This concept is something that we use at a trips tight end as well, but it's just very effective for just ensuring that they can't just roll the coverage over the bunch side because you can make that high level throw to the right. And, um, it just, it, it's just very, very effective, you know, against this. So these are some of the best route combinations, uh, in the game. I did want to give you a red zone setup as well. If you want to run a uh, bunch tight end down here in the red zone, I actually think bunch tight end is low key. One of the better red zone offenses because of the motion that you can do from this formation that you really can't do from other formations. If you guys have been enjoying this ebook or some of the different ebooks that we've dropped here on the channel recently, make sure that you join the Patreon. That's where you get access to the full schemes, the full stuff, everything. We've got uh, 16 different offensive and defensive ebooks over there. And all of those ebooks have been updated and, I really, really think that it will make you a better Madden player. If you're not in the Patreon yet, you can sign up at the link in the description for just 10 bucks. But let's talk about the red zone uh, for this offense. So if you take a look at the positioning, uh, I'm in the middle of the field as I would be like if you were on a two-point conversion. You need tight end apprentice or slot apprentice in the red zone, okay? But what we're going to do is we are just simply going to um, basically drag uh, the inside bunch receiver and then we are going to hitch the outside bunch receiver. And then really with this guy, you can kind of do whatever you want. I like to put him on a five-yard in route um, or just honestly motion blocking him. Or you can put him on a flat and motion the running back, motion him across, put the running back on a wheel like this. All those are good options. But the main route we're looking for is this tight end post. And what's really important about this tight end post, and that was, as you saw, it just kills main coverage. What's really important about the tight end post is that you smart route the route. If you smart route the route, that's really all you have to do. And then if you have this hitch over here, you'll see it's in just perfect position for holding this flat defender. And you can throw this over the top. So I actually think bunch tight end is really one of the better offenses that you can have inside the five. Now, let's say for, let's say for example that you were on the right hash mark, okay? And you wanted to run this concept. As you can see, we're not in a great position to be able to run this concept. So what we can do, again, back to kind of some of the specialties that Bunch Tight End provides, is a couple different things we, uh, we can do. Number one, we can run it to the right. And the way we'd run it to the right is we would uh, ghost route our running back and slant our inside bunch receiver. And what you'll see here is you kind of get that same behavior. 
Okay. You could do that. Um, if you had slot apprentice, you could use that slot apprentice. So uh, let's say you have this guy on a slot apprentice uh, post and you smart route it. And then let's say you don't have a backfield ability, but you have the ability to put this guy on. Um, you have the ability to put this guy on a little motion over hitch. You can do that as well. Kind of snap it once he gets to the numbers. What you see is that gets open on the sideline right there. Or the other thing that you can do here is you can put the tight. Let's say you have that tight end apprentice post. You can put this guy on a hitch and motion him outside. So now you could go with a, you could go with actually double hitches, which isn't a bad idea and a little drag underneath. And what you'll see here is look at the zones just sit in the middle of the field. I don't know why the tight end stopped running. You should never stop running. That's kind of weird that he did that. But the smart routed, uh, I think it's because he got bumped. The smart routed tight end post is is really probably the best way to uh, get separation in the red zone. So, and again, if you, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could do this type thing. Um, but you see here, wide open in the back corner of the end zone. 